Hello! Today I'll be looking at the films Pieces, directed by Ryan Trenkamp, and Colors of Brilliance, directed by Elizabeth Berry and Katherine Johnson. I'm Zach Lawrence, and this is my long take on these short films. So you don't know what country you end up going to? Nope. I'm still praying about it. But I know there's a huge need. Tons of people groups who have never heard the name of Jesus. And that I'm going to one of them. Just like Grandma and Grandpa. Young Everly has her life all planned out. She's preparing to go to a missionary training camp to be equipped for sharing the gospel to unreached people groups in Southeast Asia. Her dogged determination is met with skepticism by her younger siblings, with her sister nagging her to not forget her other commitments, and her brother just being kind of clueless. But when tragedy strikes, Everly is forced to come to grips with her dreams and plans being shattered and having to pick up the pieces. I thought that Pieces was a sweet story that has a good message of encouragement. No matter what comes our way, we can be confident that if we're seeking God's will, that he's going to work things out for his purpose. Everly goes on a good journey in this story. She starts out as a very headstrong and stubborn girl with tunnel vision on her own priorities. But God eventually humbles her and shows her that he's in charge. Now, as someone who struggles with chronic illness and depression myself, I found the story to be an encouraging reminder to not give up no matter what life throws at us. There are other good messages peppered throughout the movie too, such as the importance of memorizing scripture, not forgetting to have a missionary mindset at home as well as abroad, and to hold each other accountable to honor any commitments that we've made. Now, that said, the movie is not without its flaws. It does drag, especially at the beginning, and the acting is pretty stiff. Co-writer and lead Anna True is the exception, though. Her performance as Everly was very well done, especially in contrast with everyone else in the movie. She felt the most natural, but even she struggled with making several of her lines work. Her portrayal of Everly's emotional roller coaster, however, was definitely a highlight. Now onto the more technical analysis. The cast and crew all largely seem to be relative beginners, so you obviously can't expect it to be a perfect film. But you can tell director cinematographer Ryan Trenkamp has a good creative eye, and I was really impressed by a lot of his decisions, especially the opening credit sequence. The aerial shots in that were very well done. I also thought the staging of the tragedy scene, we'll call it so we don't give anything away, uh, it was, I thought that was very well done. I really liked how visually clear and tasteful it was. Beyond that, the cinematography was pretty basic, yet well done. There was one scene that was clearly green screen, but I almost didn't catch it at first, so that wasn't too bad. Now, as far as the characters, I really didn't like the brother. His attempts at comic relief fell flat, and I had a hard time figuring out what his contribution really was to Everly's story. The segue toward the end where he gets the journal was really clumsy, and I didn't really see the connection between what was being talked about and his note. I did like the sister character though. She worked well against Everly's flaws and helping her along in her journey. Now the dialogue toward the end did take on a bit of a forced 1950s PSA vibe to it. It's like the movie was sitting the audience down and saying, now the moral of the story, kids. <laughs> if that had been worded a bit more naturally, it would have really helped the emotional power of the ending. All in all, Pieces was a good effort for this team of young filmmakers. I appreciated the message, and while it's rough around the edges technically, I would still give this film a rating of meh positive. You can watch pieces at facebook.com slash unashamed productions. Millions of people are saved every day because of modern medicine. Maybe Jesus healed tens of thousands while he was here on earth, but that's a drop in the bucket of what a simple understanding of germs would have produced. Our omniscient God could have revealed the mysteries of science and spared countless suffering. But he's pleased to let us grovel in our ignorance, do you agree? Yes. Is this the part where I'm supposed to preach to you? Go ahead. A 13-year-old mathematical genius is given some important life advice from a fellow more experienced genius in Colors of Brilliance. This creative film has a surprisingly simple message considering its intellectual framework. 13-year-old prodigy Miriam is played very well by Campbell Pate. She handles the delivery of some very complicated lines and is very believable as a girl who tries to sound as clever as she is. I was also impressed with Tobias Elmore, who plays Abel. His measured, careful approach also brought a lot of warmth and wisdom to the role, and I really liked seeing him and Miriam play off each other. 
Now, the characters do throw around a lot of very complex mathematics speech, and it might be hard for some viewers to keep up and not get lost. When the conversation finally does turn to the emotional heart of what the story is about, the audience can be so disoriented that they may miss it. And because of that, this is definitely a film that may warrant having to watch a few times in order to make sure you're understanding the point. Now, like I said at the beginning, the message is surprisingly simple considering how highbrow the content is. And that message is pretty well given in the film's own logline. A young genius struggles with finding her identity in Christ. How does she resolve the struggle? Well, Abel basically tells her to find her identity in Christ instead of mathematics. I had to rewatch the film several times to make sure I didn't miss something along the way, and I was disappointed that I don't think I did. It feels like this film is designed for a very niche audience, and it just didn't resonate with me. And that's unfortunate because on the technical side of things, it does have a few things going for it. The cinematography was nice and creative. They went with a long take approach, with the camera almost constantly in motion, drifting back and forth between characters instead of the usual style of fast cuts between different setups. It's a style you don't really see very often. A classic example of a film with this style would be Alfred Hitchcock's Rope, which happens to be one of my favorite movies. Colors of Brilliance is comprised of only four shots, which, considering it's 15 minutes long, it's a testament to the endurance of the cast and crew. A lot of planning goes into this approach, so I definitely commend the filmmakers on trying something different. Unfortunately, the style wasn't as well utilized as it could have been. The movement of the camera almost felt random because we missed seeing things, certain reactions that would have been really nice to have seen. The movement of the camera didn't feel motivated by the actions of the characters, but instead felt like it was just a way to cover up or, or compensate for the fact that the movie is just two people talking for 15 minutes. And I think that also negatively affected the actors' performances a bit. There were a lot of pregnant pauses that didn't feel genuine, but it felt like they were there to, to give the camera time to hit its next mark, instead of just being a, a natural part of the conversation. And speaking of timing issues, the opening scene with the mother really wasn't necessary in my opinion. All that information that's given in that scene is given again during the course of Abel and Miriam's conversation, and in a much more organic, natural way at that. You could start the movie from the point when the mother brings Abel into Miriam's study, and it would have stood on its own in my opinion. So with all that said, I definitely think Colors of Brilliance is worth watching, but it doesn't hold up as well to closer scrutiny as I really wish it did. You know, I'm always happy to see filmmakers experimenting with different styles, especially if it's one of my own personal favorites. Uh, director team Elizabeth Berry and Katherine Johnson, who directed Bump, are to be commended for trying something different. But it didn't quite hit the mark, which is a real shame. So because of all that, I'm going to have to rate Colors of Brilliance a meh minus. You can watch Colors of Brilliance at risenlightfilms.com. Now, once you've seen the films featured in today's episode, let me know what you thought of them in the comments below. If there are any films you want me to look at for future episodes, leave a comment or email me at longtake at standingsun.com. I'm Zach Lawrence, and that's my long take of these short films. Thanks for watching. Short Films, The Long Take with Zach Lawrence is brought to you by Storytellers. To learn more about their mission and services for Christian storytellers of all media, visit storytellers.sctreehouse.com.